everybody and welcome back to my channel on this Sunday morning, afternoon or evening across the world where you may be at. And welcome back to my channel. I hope this Sunday is finding you all well. And today I'm going to be doing a video about the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and his recent welfare reform speech. I've been holding back doing this video because of my anger and frustration and annoyance at the UK Prime Minister and his recent lack of care towards people with disabilities, mental health issues and long-term physical health implications. And as a autistic woman, I thought it was important to raise the profile of and to talk about what happened in his latest welfare reform speech. So he starts with, he recognises people who have long-term health conditions. Everybody with the potential to work should be supported into the world of work. Yes, well, I partially agree with that sentiment. No, I don't in others because not all disabled people or people with physical long-term issues or mental health issues can work due to their severity of their condition. So again, that point defeats the object. Well, and whilst I do, yes, agree with the value of work is essential in the workplace, yes. But he always says work always pays. But this is where I have the issue with agreeing with Rishi Sunak here because work doesn't always pay. I've been off long-term work for quite a while now as a disabled autistic woman and that's no fault of my own. I've tried applying for jobs more times than I can count and being rejected based on my medical declaration and I find that's really unfair and we don't get a chance to prove ourselves within the world of work. So people with disabilities, long-term health conditions, mental health conditions are not treated equally to our neurotypical counterparts. And um, it comes into the world of work. We have to try much harder than the normal average everyday Joe, if you want to call them them. And then he says that people like us with long-term health conditions and mental health issues or physical learning disabilities are using our disabilities as a fashion trend. This really, 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 really insulted me because one, we don't use our disability as a fashion trend. Two, I certainly do not use it as a fashion trend. It's something that I am legally diagnosed with via mental health professionals after a very, 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 very long period of assessment and testing and talking and evaluating and not just physical evaluation, but mental evaluation. I was declared to be autistic. I've got general anxiety disorder or clinical anxiety disorder as it's named within the NHS on the actual official diagnosis. So I have two diagnoses of autism and clinical anxiety disorder. So when he says that we are trying to use it as a fashion trend to stay out of work, that really irritated me because he clearly has no world what he's living in. He has no sense of reality. He is totally out of touch with the average UK disabled person. And the fact that he's saying that we're not trying hard enough to look for work, again, this is very insulting, incorrect, very, very dangerous statement to be making to the millions out there who are disabled or who are recently being recognised as being disabled. So to say that, you know, that we are being lazy or we're not trying to be productive individuals, which is extremely harmful and extremely dangerous and actually completely inaccurate. So again, that's where he's wrong on that. And he doesn't understand what it's like being an average disabled person every day. I've been diagnosed now 12 years upcoming and I have always been this way. I've always been autistic, but it's just because I haven't been diagnosed till later on in my life. I was diagnosed at 24. I'm now approaching my 36th birthday and I'll be autistic till the day I die. So, you know, it's you can't say that we're using our disabilities as a trend label or we're using it as a safety blanket. That is completely irresponsible and completely and utterly selfish and completely and utterly wrong. It's just unacceptable. And he says that the DWP are there to try and help people with mental health, long-term disability, physical health issues back into the world of work. This is where he is wrong yet again. Because let me tell you, as someone who is someone who attends the job centre regularly when she's asked to do so, 
and I have regularly attended every job centre scheme in the last eight years of being unemployed. I've gone to every programme that I've been asked to do, I've taken part in, completed them and been entitled to my benefit that I am awarded. I am currently on disability because obviously I am disabled. That was awarded by the UK government, just failed to mention that you guys award me that basis on my criteria of what my autism evaluation was and what the DWP saw me and awarded me to be as such. And you say about employers offering reasonable adjustments. Um, Where have you got that from? Because a lot of employers that I've spoken to don't know how to offer reasonable adjustments or are very much not aware of them. So for where you're getting this information from about that employers are offering reasonable adjustments to people with disabilities, again, this is completely inaccurate unless you work within the mental health field or autism field or within a mental health capacity because as someone who volunteers for her local autism service, they do make adaptations, they do make reasonable adjustments for people to work. But again, that is because it has been requested or agreed on the basis of my volunteer work to make me suitable for work, to help me cope in an environment that is not built for me or my needs. It is about to communicating people about getting my needs evaluated, make sure that I'm able to work and successfully be part of the team and take on board the workday and everything else. So again, that is a each individual person thing. That isn't something that is automatically awarded or automatically given to you. So again, he is so totally out of touch when it comes to people with disabilities or long-term health conditions. Also, I want to say the next thing is that he says that employers and the DWP give the appropriate support. Um, I'm sorry. I've been going through the system over now, over eight, nine years, and I've received very, very basic uh, support. I've had very, very little support in terms of the job centre. They see you as a number. They have you in through the door, do what they've got to do, send you out. There is no in-depth support available. There is no specific disability support. When I did have some disability support, it was very, very limited and for a very, very short time period. So again, I don't know where he's getting his information from, but when you have a medical diagnosed condition, especially when you go to apply for job applications as through my own experience this is all my own experience by the way um you are treated as someone who can't be trusted or you're treated as like you're a burden to the state and unfortunately that is very very common with people with disabilities across the board not just autism but what i found throughout the whole disability spectrum you are treated like a burden because as soon as you have to declare oh it says on the job application oh do you have a long-term health condition or disability that you wish to declare and it says yes or no you legally we have to declare having a health issue or a disability because that is what we've got and again amount of times that i've been rejected from applications because i've ticked yes and stated i have autism and anxiety disorder employers do not want to know it's a fact they bin your application before you even have a chance to get your foot in the door it's absolutely absurd it is discrimination and for rishi to say oh well employers are more supportive now uh no like i'm very lucky the volunteering that i do for my local autism service yes they bend over backwards for me you know they help me out they defend me you know they support me they include me you know they 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 help me with training you know they pay my travel costs because if it wasn't for that kind of stuff i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing now and you know speaking up for many people and speaking up for myself you know there isn't support in the workplace. So for him to say, oh, employers are more supportive now, you know, they understand, they can offer mental health support. No, not all employers can, or they don't know how to, because a lot of people, like I say, that I've experienced, they don't know the first thing of how to support autistic people or people with disabilities. Again, this is so inaccurate and actually quite dangerous because you are putting disabled people's lives at risk by making statements like this because a lot of us unfortunately either can't work or are on part-time work or feel that they have to leave work altogether due to the inappropriate support or inappropriate reasonable adaptions or having no one else that they can speak to about their conditions 
Also, him then stating, oh, people with disabilities or long-term health issues can work at least half the, half, half the amount of full-time hours. Uh, since when? Because if you check someone who's on the DWP PIP allowance, which I am actually on PIP, personal independence payment, you cannot work legally more than 16 hours a week because otherwise we risk getting our disability taken away. So where is Rishi getting this information from again that we're able to work half the amount of full-time hours when we're on disability? This is completely inaccurate and completely dangerous because you're telling one thing to the whole media and the masses saying, oh, well, you can work, you can go into work and, you know, you can work half the full-time working week. No, we can't because... On the DW PIP agreement, it clearly states you can't, you cannot work more than sixteen hours a week before risking having all benefits confiscated. So again, this is completely inaccurate and so so dangerous that he, I can't even begin to stress how dangerous and how potential mental health issues that he's causing by that statement. Also, he's saying that people who are on PIP or who are abusing it are going to have their PIP withdrawn or have it lowered during this new DWP um, test or evaluation. PIP is a benefit that is awarded by the UK government and by the DWP for people who are physically, mentally and long-term sick. And it is awarded on the basis of your psychological evaluation and what the government guarantees you as a disability. And he's basically saying all PIP claimants are now going to be reassessed and either being lowered or having their pip scrapped entirely. This is completely dangerous as someone that relies on that pip money to help her live and be independent, pay her own bills. You know, how do you expect a disabled person or person with mental health issues to live without this pip allowance? It's absolutely absurd that like you're punishing the disabled for your screw ups, your muck ups, something that you've made a mess of. You know, you have no idea what it's like to be disabled. You have no idea what it's like to be scared of being labelled and judged and criticised and not wanted and not accepted. And you don't know the first thing what it's like to get up in the morning and feel completely anxious, so much over your head that you feel you're a failure, you're a muck up, you're a screw up. People don't want to know you, they don't want to talk to you. You don't know what it's like to have that insecurity every day. Don't play dumb, Rishi, come on. Like, you don't know the half of what it's like to be a disabled person. I wish you would. I wish you would experience what it's like to be disabled because I can tell you it's not fun being disabled. It's isolating. It's lonely. It's hard. It's a constant fight with the government all the time and the local authority. And to say that a lot of us need respite. Come on, Rishi. Where have you got that from? A lot of us do not need respite care. Respite care is for people who are either long-term, terminally ill, in which case, yes, they do need respite, and to give their parents, carers, professionals a break. Yes, I understand that. But labelling all people with disabilities saying that we need respite care, that's completely inaccurate and so, so dangerous. We don't all need respite care. It's a completely stupid thing to say that, you know. It's it's ridiculous. Like, you have no empathy or understanding or compassion for your fellow disabled person. Clearly, in the UK, especially with autism, it's in one in every 100 people, which means you're going to meet someone every day with autism. How can you go around saying this and say, oh, oh it's, it's for the better good, you know, it's to encourage people into the world of work and that uh, people with disabilities or mental health issues or long-term issues are lazy. This is completely dangerous. What you're doing is stupid. It's dangerous. It's going to cause a lot of mental health issues. It's going to cause a lot of stress and anxiety. And what you're doing, you just have no care. You have no compassion. Where is your morals? Where is your empathy? Where is your compassion? Where is your understanding? Come and spend a day with people with disabilities, I beg you, because you clearly have no idea what you're saying. It's completely harmful. You're talking out your backside, and I wish more politicians would be very, very careful with making decisions for us disabled people because you can't make decisions without us, and it's just so, so dangerous. Prime Minister, please, I beg you, stop these welfare reform cuts. What you're doing is disgusting and you it's just horrible. It's not needed. And the fact you are 
deliberately targeting people with disabilities in this speech is just absurd. You clearly don't know what it's like to live on the spectrum or clearly live with a long-term health issue. And I just wish that you would reconsider everything that you've done and the stress you're going to cause, the anxiety you're going to cause, the distress you're going to cause, the anger you're causing. You know, you're putting disabled people's lives at risk for what benefit? For the government to save a bit of money? For the government to have less disabled people? You're basically wanting to commit genocide. It's absurd. It is so totally, totally, totally absurd. Please let me know, guys, what you think down below in the comment section. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.